Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. I'm somebody when it comes to COVID-19 that likes to constantly be looking at data. Data on case numbers, hospitalizations, deaths, and looking at differences between different countries, and also making observations and drawing comparisons. Kind of what science should all be about, right? When it comes to comparisons between 2021 and 2020, this is something that I've heard a lot of questions asked about, and I thought now would be a good time to start touching on this data. Now, we're not quite done yet with 2021. We still have a couple of months left. However, I want to pick three random time points in 2021 and compare them to 2020 for my two favorite countries, the United States and United Kingdom, and then discuss the data. The source that I used was Statista.com. I use a number of different sources for looking and collecting data. This is one that I often use and I compare it to other data sources as well. And the data does compare. So let's start off then with the United States. New cases of COVID-19 per day. October 15th, 2021, 97,320 cases. October 15th, 2020. 54,622 new cases. July the 15th, 2021, 35,666 cases. July the 15th, 2020, 54,742 new cases. April the 15th, 2021, 73,152 new cases of COVID-19. April the 15th, 2020, 25,164 new cases. Let's move on now to the United Kingdom. October the 15th, 2021, 44,932 new cases. October the 15th, 2020, 18,980 new cases. July the 15th, 2021, 48,553 new cases of COVID-19. July the 15th, 2020, 538 new cases. April the 15th, 2021, 2,672 new cases of COVID-19. April the 15th, 2020, 4,605 new cases. So those numbers are very interesting indeed. For two of the three time points, cases were worse and higher in 2021 versus 2020. And remember, total number of COVID cases correlate very closely most of the time with COVID hospitalizations and deaths. With regards to total deaths, 2021 versus 2020, again, we have two months left of 2021. But what I can tell you, at least in the United States, was that I recently read an article in Forbes, which was looking at data from Johns Hopkins University. And they said as of the beginning of October, total deaths had already surpassed the total number of deaths for 2020. 353,000 deaths in the United States, exceeding the documented 352,000 in 2020. So those numbers make very sobering reading indeed. And as I've said many times before, our job in medicine and science is always to take a step back and look at data objectively and think what is going on here with any numbers we see or patterns that we observe. I've heard some people say who have looked at numbers like this, well, why would 2021 possibly be worse than 2020 after we've had a widespread vaccine rollout? That is a valid question and I want to address it a bit now. Well, let's think first what percentage of the population in both countries is fully vaccinated by definition. Obviously, for most of the vaccines, that means two doses of the vaccine. Now, these numbers might be skewed a little bit by the fact that the United Kingdom doesn't give two vaccine doses to teenagers. They only give one dose. But as per this definition, 58% of the United States total population is fully vaccinated and 67% of the United Kingdom total population is vaccinated. Remember, these numbers will never be 100% for a number of different reasons, including the fact that the total population also includes children, toddlers, even newborns who aren't going to get vaccinated. So let's think then what could be going into these numbers or skewing them at all. Number one, the statistics for 2020 do not include the first couple of months of that year. 
January, February and part of March 2020, it is very likely that COVID-19 was already spreading like wildfire around many Western cities, but we didn't know about it at the time and any statistics on cases or deaths could not possibly be included for the total figures of 2020, which generally started well into March of that year. Number two, the second thing to think about here is that the figures for 2021 also include the winter surge that we had in many parts of the United States at the end of 2020 and in the United Kingdom. So as for people who may have passed away at the beginning of 2021 or got COVID-19, many people, especially the vulnerable groups I'm thinking of here, wouldn't have had a chance to be fully vaccinated anyway. Number three, is it because of unvaccinated people causing COVID-19 case spikes, hospitalizations and deaths? As I touched upon in a recent video, while the data does suggest that unvaccinated people are entering hospital at a higher rate than would be expected according to vaccination status by population, Public Health England themselves said that the majority of people now presenting to English hospitals with COVID-19 are fully vaccinated. By the same token, the data does suggest that we are seeing less ill people as a result, which is encouraging, especially again in those vulnerable people that we want to keep a razor sharp focus on. Number four, do we simply have more testing capabilities in 2021 versus 2020? This is a very good point because among all nations in the world, the United Kingdom and United States probably have made it the easiest to get a COVID-19 test. And many people don't have this perspective, especially people in Western countries who haven't traveled to poorer parts of the world. But if you think that certain nations, poor countries, say a village in rural India or Africa is going to have the resources or even the drive and desire to test for mild COVID-19 cases, you are living in fantasy land. That is simply not the case in large swathes of the world. It's very difficult to get a COVID-19 test. Number five, is it because restrictions have been relaxed and life has normalized across most parts of the United States and United Kingdom? Remember, in 2020, large swathes of our countries were under lockdowns and had big restrictions on movement and social gatherings. And finally, can you think of any others? Could, for instance, the Delta variant have played a part here in causing higher case numbers, hospitalizations and deaths in 2021 versus 2020? So as far as I'm concerned, this sort of question is exactly what medicine and science is all about. Why are 2021 COVID numbers worse than 2020? And I'm at pains to say, as I've said before, that there are some people, even in my own profession, that don't seem to understand that medicine and science is about rigorous open debate. How dare you ask that question? It makes me feel uncomfortable. This is crazy. Let me tell you something. Science doesn't exist to make us feel comfortable. That is not me being cold. It is simply the truth. Science and medicine is not about feelings and emotions. It is about logic. It's about thinking things through. Dear oh dear, some of the greats of our past, Galileo, Sir Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein even, would be turning in their graves if they saw some of what's happened over the last 18 months. Science and medicine must always be about open, rigorous debate, keeping an open mind and asking the right questions. Thanks everyone for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, Medstroik Lifestyle Medicine. We'll speak again very soon.